some life, but the Tour de France continues. Hello, everyone. I'm Adrian Karsten with Phil Liggett, welcoming you to ESPN's exclusive coverage of the 1995 Tour de France presented by Michelin. You know, for almost every summer since 1903, the motivation for the riders and the reporters to get up and go day after day has come in part from the memories that are made as the miles roll by. Well, Phil, after yesterday's death of Fabio Casartelli, his memory is all that we're left with, but that in itself is motivation. It is. You know, when you take part in the Tour de France, you never expect to lose your life in it. Although, really, one should, because it is a dangerous event. We're using the roads of the open countryside, where there are no barriers, no protection, and we saw yesterday just how serious this can be when you're descending at more than 50 miles an hour. But the Tour de France over the years, the annals have made this race for the Romantics. People like Fabio Cassatelli will never be forgotten, Adrian. He's now in the annals of this great race. Well, I think he took his place on a podium where there is no first or second. The Tour didn't stop in 1967 after Tommy Simpson's death, nor will it stop today. No, I mean, I can remember the death of Tommy Simpson. I actually can remember exactly what I was doing. I'd just finished second in a road race. I'd gone back to the house because the race was only a mile from where I lived. My number was still pinned on, and I turned the television on, and they said, the British rider Tommy Simpson died today in the Tour de France. I stood still and stared at the television. Today, the entire tour will probably take a few minutes to reflect on Fabio's life, and then the tour will continue. Motorola uniform number 114 has been retired from the tour. Now, here's one of Fabio's friends. You know, this morning, I'm not a television commentator. I'm not a journalist. I'm an ex-Tour de France rider. Last night in the press room, I met a lot of former colleagues who rode the Tour de France with me, and we all said exactly the same thing. We never once thought about death. Riders always take risks. They want to be at the front. They have to take risks to be in the sport. But you know, it was such a difficult thing yesterday, and I don't think anybody can explain the pain that we all feel inside. One thing I do know, though, that every rider who was here on the Tour de France yesterday, every former rider, will remember Fabio Casatelli, the man who in 1992 was the Olympic champion. I hope you don't forget either. Paul, none of us will ever forget this solemn moment this morning. Tour organizers dedicating 60 seconds of silence to the memory of Casertelli. that out of respect for Fabio, the Peloton, led by Team Motorola, would ride but not race today. That is, no breakaways, no attacks, no sprints to the finish. That is exactly what happened after Tommy Simpson's death in 1967. But life in the Tour goes on. And before we go ahead, let's look back one more time at yesterday's racing. The passion that cycling fans in France have for this sport. Look at the faces of these people who are here on the roads today, even though they know they may not see the race that they expected. The day after the death of Fabio Casartelli. The tour goes on. And with the yellow jersey in the center of our picture, and a Motorola rider, Andre Perron, riding on the front left there. The race today have made the gesture of donating all of the day's prizes. Uh, to the family of uh, Castatelli and in fact the Tour de France organization immediately uh, doubled the amount so for them it means a total donation uh, to uh, Signora Castatelli of 90,000 uh, American dollars but Paul it's also apparent too that the riders have decided not to race we're about 80 kilometers from the finish they're approximately 45 minutes behind the expected time and that they are not racing at all no, I think that accident yesterday has hit the whole peloton, not just the riders on the Motorola squad. Talking to one or two riders before the start this morning, they said they'd had awful nights, they hadn't been able to sleep, and they've been thinking about the situation because many of the riders in the Tour de France here have families just as Fabio Casatelli did, and it was something that they couldn't bring themselves to race. They'd had an awful time trying to get out of bed this morning and face the day. Then the descent, and we climbed the Col de Marie Blanc. Uh, this, by the way, was the climb where a few years ago Greg LeMond punctured. You may remember the dramatic scenes there uh, when his teammates were in an escape and they had to stand by the roadside and await to help Greg LeMond back into the action. 
uh, because you're never allowed to turn around and go back towards the race. So they had to wait for Le Mans to come to them. That was a couple of years ago, of course. This is a day developing as a memorial race for Fabio Casartelli. You know, the great Dane Bjarna Reese, who climbed from fourth to third yesterday, like most riders, did not know of Fabio's death until after Reese finished. One of the best rides, I think, of this year's Tour de France is the ride of the Danish road racing champion, Bjorn Rees Paul. There was no indication when he only finished 73rd in the prologue in the heavy rain, 41 seconds behind the winner, that he was going to rise to be third overall in this race today. It wasn't at all, but I think the fact that he's on the strong Gewis team and the time that they did in the team time trial there really moved him up the leaderboard. But that really was confirmed afterwards by the superb time trial he did around the streets of Liège, which finished in Ceran. He finished 12 seconds behind Miguel Indurain, and that's where he laid the foundations of his high place in the overall standings today. And I honestly think that really did shock uh, Miguel Indurain. He uh, dropped away to third place uh, by the time he went down to the Alps, and by Monda, he'd fallen out, in fact, to fourth place because of the long escape by the Once team, which included Laurence uh, Jalabert, and Jalabert got up to third. But yesterday, on the ride to Coteray, our, um, Bjorn Reese was totally unaware, of course, of the tragedy on the road, and he raced uh, to get back his third place overall, and he now, today, is five minutes and 59 seconds behind in Durain. Reese, the surprise of the 95 Tour, began his pursuit to a top five position at the individual time trial. Stage 16 has become something special. We're watching athletes whose careers can be made in one day, take one day to dedicate their careers to the life of one man. The Michelin race summary is simply this. Team Motorola and the entire tour has dedicated this day to the memory of Fabio Casartelli. Let's rejoin Phil Liggett. Well, I think today, the race, which has certainly uh, paid due respects to the uh, rider Fabio Casatelli, they're now going to decide, to, I think, Paul, to let the whole team cross the line. I think that's exactly what they do, because you can't offer a victory. And here, the rider's looking back to see what the position is with Stephen Swart. This is Lance Armstrong, waiting for Swarty to get back up there. Armstrong, who led over the top of the climb of the Col de Chulour and also the Col de Visque. And now he accelerates clear when they realize that Stephen is back with them. The riders from Motorola who carry the numbers 111 to 119. Lance Armstrong, Frankie Andreu, Steve Bauer, Alvaro Mejia, Andrea Perone, and Stephen Swartz. There you see the whole of the Tour de France after two and a half weeks of racing. 117 riders in that pack. Enormous crowd, as always, on the Tour de France. Out in the Pyrenees as well today, despite the fact that they saw no racing at all, just the big peloton uh, riding through. It's been a very long day in the saddle. Uh, starting at 10.30 local time this morning and now running up to nearly half past six in the evening. Alvaro Mejia on the right, the Colombian member of what is really a truly international team. Familiar figure of Steve Bauer, an old hand at the Tour de France, but he's never known anything quite like this today. Three kilometres to go. Still three kilometers and still some 400 miles until we finally see the Eiffel Tower on the horizon. It's hard to believe that for one man, the Tour de France is finally over. With his memory goes Team Motorola. We'll be back. So quite clearly the riders have discussed this during the day and the, the Motorola team were told to come to the front at around about 12 kilometers from the finish. When Steven Swart punctured, the race shut off until he rejoined as everybody on this team had to be involved in this result. The helicopters are now overhead of our commentary position and the riders will shortly swing into the center of the finishing circuit here in Po. And the crowd looking in almost silence at the arrival of the riders from Motorola.
the crowd do know what going on what is going on because the french and the many many spanish people here are very au fait with what is happening in the tour de france today no one will criticize the riders for this they now fan out across the road and the riders holding themselves off at a respectful distance to an applause the Tour de France has never known before. The Motorola team remember Fabio Casatelli. Phil, rather an unforgettable shot in itself. The unity of Team Motorola speaks for the entire field of the Tour de France here in 1995. There is no change overall in the standings. Miguel Indurain, this is his ninth consecutive day in the yellow jersey. Can he wear it all the way into Paris? Zula in second doesn't think so, nor does Reese, who has moved up to third after yesterday's fantastic finish. Speaking of finishes, here comes the rest of the peloton, including Indurain in his yellow jersey. He is the leader of the 1995 Tour de France at this point. The world's greatest cycling event has now traveled 1,878 miles with only 381 still to go. Be sure to join us tomorrow for Stage 17 when the tour begins in Poe and ends in Bordeaux. Coverage begins on ESPN at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 6 p.m. on ESPN2. When this tour finally finishes, there will be one less rider going home, but we'll all take his memory with us our entire Tour de France team. One with Phil Liggett, I'm Adrian Karsten, welcoming you to ESPN's exclusive coverage of the 1995 Tour de France presented by Michelin. You know, when the riders reach this level in their profession, one day can make their career. Well, Phil, yesterday we saw these guys sacrifice themselves and a chance to win a stage for a friend and a life that was lost. Yes, what we saw yesterday was a peloton, a big pack of great athletes who had a very big heart. I hope we never see that again, of course, but yesterday they did it just right, I think. You know, yesterday I really do believe that the riders of the Tour de France paid the highest tribute that they could to their departed friend Fabio Cassatelli. But here in the relative calm of the start area, it's a lot cooler, but the atmosphere has changed. On the road to Bordeaux, it's normally the sprinters we see riding at the front fighting for victory. But today I think the race will be different because the rides of the Tour de France today would like to honor the race. A swatch of black cloth tied to Fabio's bike. His legacy tied to this sport. His teammates can finally talk about it. Yesterday was super hard. I mean, on the start line, uh, first, you know, beginning first 10, 15 kilometers of the race, everybody was just, I mean, really broken up. Uh, crying, hard to ride. Uh, I mean, super emotional. And then it was a super show of respect. And the race was, the whole day was in honor of Fabio. And everybody rode slow, which was, it was, it was nice. And then uh, they allowed the Motorola team to go in the front and cross the line all together, you know. And then uh, we decided not to go to the podium because, um, you know, that's where we want Fabio, you know, so, like, kind of the, the missing rider. And, you know, the hard part is just, you know, it's going to be super hard when we get to Paris, too, him not being there in Paris, you know, when we have to do that victory lap and uh, we have that empty slot. And so, but, you know, I mean, uh, yesterday the beginning was the hardest thing, I mean, for sure. It was all night, every night, it's been bad. I mean, it's not a fun tour anymore. Well, it was never fun in the beginning either, but it's, it's not, uh, you're not so much looking forward to finishing, you're not so much looking forward to getting to Paris, you're not so much looking forward to, you know, you just kind of want to get away from everything now. Motorola's team colors aren't just red, white, and blue anymore. All of the cyclists agreed on a show of solidarity, but a few riders felt that the tribute should have been handled differently. In third place overall, Bjarne Ries. I don't know, maybe I'm the, the only one who thinks so, but I think it was a mistake we did yesterday, because first of all, the day was too long for us, for everybody. It was a very hard day because to ride eight hours, think the whole day of this poor guy, it was very bad. I think we shouldn't have started or just have done 100 kilometers, then that's it. Or we should have done the, 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 the stage normal. Because I think the best for everybody is to 
it's hard to say, but it's. I think it's best to to leave it behind as quick as possible. Another rider who basically agreed with Reese, Marco Pantani, an old friend of Casartelli, suggested that they raced yesterday and ride a memorial pace today during the actual hours of the funeral. The word is that Miguel Indurain initiated yesterday's tribute in the peloton. Class. There was very little talking all along the course yesterday, so this morning, Armstrong opened up a bit. I, mean, I can't sit here and tell you that I, that I was his best friend or that I knew him like I know Frank here or like I know Sean, but I can tell you that, that what I knew I really liked, and, and he was a good guy, and, and he was going to be a part of this program. And, uh, he was not only our, our friend or our teammate, he was our brother, he was our... Uh, uh, somebody we can fight. I mean, he was just a great guy, so... It's, it's very difficult. It was, yesterday was was certainly the, the hardest day of my career. A young career that may improve in part because of hardship on the 1995 Tour de France.